Hello and welcome to The Discomfort Zone, the podcast that gets you comfortable with the uncomfortable. Now today, we are doing The Perfect Day. We will be taking you through a step-to-step guide of how to curate the perfect day from the moment you wake up until the moment when you get to work, what to eat, how to train, and how to have the happy moments that we all desire. Hello. 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 We're all back again. We are back together. All three of us. And today we're going to have a really practical episode. Today is how to have the most practical day you've ever had in your whole life. Yep. That's what today's about. From waking up to going to bed, we're going to go through all the helpful things, tidbits you can do along the way. So let's just get, we've woken up. We're awake in the beginning of the day. Yeah. And uh, what do you do? I think even going a step back, waking up. Oh, okay. So I would say waking up is the thing that people ask a lot of questions about. How do you wake up so early? Gosh, aren't you tired all day? And the answer is I very, very rarely wake up to an alarm. My, my approach to life is waking up to natural light. It's really important. So when I wake up in the morning, when I go to bed in the evening, I leave my my curtains open Mm. just like a little bit, a crack. And then when I wake up in the morning, I've sort of gradually been woken up by sunlight as opposed to this like punch of some noisy alarm banging off in my ear. And then as soon as I wake up, I get out of bed. I don't snooze my alarm. I don't lie there. I get up and then... I go outside and the theory behind going outside is around getting natural light in the morning before you pick up your telephone and look at your phone and get a blue light or an artificial bathroom light because if you open your bathroom door those lights are they're really bright they're not Mm. soft light it's really bright and it sort of overstimulates you. So going outside, getting some natural light and then taking maybe a walk or if you're not in a place to walk just around the garden or a balcony or just something where you get light and air is for me the best way of waking up in the morning. And nature. I'll chuck that in. If you can combine the light and the fresh air with a bit of greenery, trees especially good because trees give out really helpful fentacides, natural chemicals that help restore you, manage your stress levels. Is that give why you people hug trees? It's really helpful for you. Actually, during lockdown, the Icelandic government recommended to people to go hug trees because there's really good health benefits of hugging trees or being very close to trees. So yeah, also get some trees in your early Just days like, as well. Oh, this is my close friend, Tree. <laughs> Mr. Tree. Hi, Tree. Mr. Tree, find your favourite tree. I uh, couldn't do more the opposite of what you've just said that you do. Why? I am everything that you said not to do. That's exactly what I do in the morning. Why, what do you do? Wake up for my alarm, go straight onto my phone, go straight onto news, Instagram, messages on WhatsApp. Then I'll get out of bed. Then I'll go straight into the bathroom, downstairs, make a coffee, back upstairs, get dressed, and then I go outside. So you're a good, I'd say, 20 minutes before I've stepped foot outside. But I think they say within the I'm first, gonna take like some say, of these things on. Yeah. And well, I think lots of people do that. I still, oh, actually, I don't need an alarm because my kids wake me up. Um, but they say, actually, if you, the first thing, if you have a really aggressive alarm, because sometimes you need that to wake yeah. up. But well, the first thing you get, why do you wake up with an alarm? What happens in your brain is that you get a hit of cortisol and adrenaline. The alarm is made to alert you. That's what an alarm yeah. is. So actually, a really loud alarm, you will be, get up, but you'll also be flooded with stress hormones. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah there's some lovely apps as well that you can put under your pillow yes. and it notices when you're in a lighter phase of sleep and then it gently uh, rises you up or, or have a natural and you know i know you've got for some of the kids you can get these natural clocks mm. which they give you more and more bright light as around your um, wake time in the morning again another soft cue for waking up so any of that Yeah, really helpful. I think the point of today is because if you think about it logically, the whole way we operate our days is completely back to front. I watched a documentary. um, I can't remember who it was by. And it was all about sleep and productivity. And one of the things they noticed is they filmed people on the tube at 8 a.m., 90% of the carriage having a nap. Mm. And they said, what world do we live in where it's 8 a.m. and everyone's already had to go back to sleep? Like clearly, that's not normal. That's not a functioning operational part of your day if by eight o'clock in the morning, you're ready to go back to bed. Wow. But if you yeah. think about that, that's mental, right? That's not normal. 
And whether or not, like when you talk to people who do exercise first thing in the morning, you can really see the difference. They are energized. Everyone that finished my class this morning when they walked out said um, they only do the class for the feeling after, which I love because it makes them feel so great for the rest of their day. So they might not enjoy it while they're there, but as soon as they're done, they love that feeling, A, because they've done it, and B, because they can be smug all day and tell people they've done an early morning workout. But it does recharge it you. It does set you. Well, and if you think about the hormones on your in your body, the, there's the hormones of stress and cortisol. What happens after a workout is you get two main ones. You get um, endorphins, yes. the really lovely feelings, and you get dopamine as well, which is the reward part of the hormone, which goes, yeah, I did this. Yes. So what else can I achieve? Yeah. Um, but it's really interesting. I, I was doing a quick Google to remind myself of the name. But in Japan, there's this phenomena. They've got a word for it called karoshi. Yeah, I've heard of it. Which um, means death by overwork. Yeah. And it's people. Um, it's, it's a really, karoshi people, isn't it? People have like karoshi. Yeah. People, you'll find people literally work themselves to death. Yes. Oh, and dear God. I know it's really, it's really scary. And so actually what the Japanese government really emphasized was time out in nature and also doing things that restore you because they realized this is a really unhealthy culture, like being on the tube in the morning and being this fatigued. Yeah. Short term, okay. Long term, not so okay. So what can you do this early first phase of the day? One thing extra you're going to do, the 1%, one thing extra, that's going to help you have a healthy start to the day. Challenge. Yes, exactly. You've got options. You can go outside. You can leave a little bit of light in your room. With can... that, sorry, what do you do in the winter? I still go outside. No, waking up. Oh, you mean with the light? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fair. It's harder, obviously, but I still will try and, if that's the case, set an alarm, but I won't have like a blaring alarm yeah. and I will never snooze my alarm. Because no. I think snoozing or alarm, you just get alerted five or six times. It's basically like, ah, sleep. Ah, sleep, ah, sleep, <laughs> over and over again. Like, what the fuck? And first win of the day, isn't it? There's, um, you know, you wake up on your alarm, set an intention. But like the, last, the night before, that's also, if you go wind it back as well, set some intentions. What are you going to do the first thing in the morning? If you know what you're going to do that first hour of the day, it's easier to do it. If you wake up and you have to make a decision when you're tired, very hard. We talked about this before. If you make yeah. a decision, am I, am I not going to the gym? What outfit should I wear today to work? Yeah. Just clear all that. Yeah. You don't need that. Exactly. You don't need that. Take the first all thing the yeah. hard work out of it yeah. and just think about making your life as easy as possible. And remember, waking up, it's really only the first five minutes that are difficult. Yeah. It's not a long term or for the next three hours you feel tired. You, I can guarantee you don't. Guarantee yeah. Once it. you're out of bed, you're good. You're ready to go. Yeah, exactly. So then, okay, you're out of bed. You're out of bed. <laughs> well done. You've had your there. nature. Yeah. And then um, what's your views on when to eat? So uh, lots of people talk about getting the right nutrition in from the start of the day. Any advice you can give to our listeners about nutrition starting out the day? I, m my personal opinion is it's everybody is a bit different. Okay. So I wake up early and I have a busy day. So I my, my workouts tend to be around 6 a.m. early in the morning. I don't tend to work out longer than 45 minutes to an hour at that time of day. So I personally don't eat before a workout. Because I don't feel like I need to. So I, I do my workouts fasted. It's what works for me. Do you do the same thing, Deves? You don't if, train quite as early though, do you? No. But um, if I am training early, then yes. And if not, if I've got a 6 a.m. client, then I'll just eat whilst I'm training my client. Because I'm so back to back. So I don't have time to actually sit down and eat breakfast properly. So I'll make overnight oats and whilst I'm training, they know it's fine. I'm just there eating. Yeah. You just, unfortunately in our job, we have to be grab and go yes we so don't have time to sit and eat properly but no. you're listening to your body what you're saying is everyone's slightly different with yes, yes. some people will do what need works for you exactly right. some people will need to eat if you have low blood sugar you might need to eat there is a theory that starting your day with um purely carbohydrate is going to spike your like insulin levels and it's going to leave you with cravings for longer throughout the day so starting the day with a higher protein meal if you find a lot of people say oh i don't like eating early because then it starts my appetite and i get really hungry and then i tend to eat all day but that's often because the first thing you've put in your body is sugar because if you read the back of bran flakes what oh, you wow. believe is yeah. a healthy cereal the yeah. second like ingredient is sugar really if you have to eat special cake even the ones you think on the you pull out and you think that's the healthy one mm -hmm. yeah 
100%. The only thing that isn't going to have sugar in it is like a whole grain oat where you're literally buying a bag of oats. Yeah. Um, or things like... I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, maybe a Weetabix, I'm not sure. But I would say most things will have some kind of sugar. And if that's the thing that's going first into your body, that is going to spike your insulin. You are going to get a sugar, high, a sugar high, a sugar low, and you are going to be hungrier. If you were to wake up and eat some protein, first of all, but if you need to eat, it is going to be a slower release. Okay. The other bit we talked about was about caffeine. Yes. Early in the morning. Now, what do you do for caffeine? I drink it. Theory is you shouldn't. I drink it. I drink it. You drink I caffeine. can't be friendly with people that don't. I, <laughs> I need my like, coffee. Yeah. Um, I do drink coffee. But You're not as bad as me. No, no, I definitely am. I don't do anything until I have a coffee first. Th- like As in I wake up, yeah. put my clothes on, go downstairs, turn on the coffee machine, have a shot of espresso. What I don't enjoy doing is I personally don't like the fake like monster energy drinks. They make me feel really jittery. They're very sugary, those things as well? You can get sugar-free ones. They are just really concentrated and really unnatural. Caffeine is at least, if I'm just having a pure black coffee, for me, that's enough. There is a theory, I'm sure you know more about it than I do, that having caffeine that early into your wake-up just basically gives you a false sense of awakeness. Where really, if you could try and avoid coffee for the first hour to hour and a half of your day, then actually, you're not tricking your body into a full sense of alertness and waking up. Yeah, they say, well, there was a Dan Huberman podcast that he said, Dan Huberman? Is it Dan Huberman? Or Huberman Labs. My, isn't it Michael Huberman? Let's go with Huberman Labs. Let's go with that. Huberman. He, he spoke, What's his name? Um, we'll, we'll get Dr. a quick Google. We'll get it out Michael. in a second. I think it's... Oh. Um, but Isn't he it says, Wolf? wait, 90... No, that's... that's no, 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 you're thinking of... No. Will no, other guy. no. What is his name? Huberman. Maybe you're right. It just sounds weird. Andrew. Andrew Huberman. Andrew. <laughs> Both wrong. <laughs> Dan Michael Huberman. Andrew, there's an A and N and a D in there. So um so he says don't have uh, caffeine for the first ninety minutes of the day for all those reasons you said, but he explains the neuroscience behind it. Because actually he's saying you won't get the benefits of it. And throughout the day, don't forget our sleep wake cycle is happens twice in the day. It's the hormones up rise and fall. Happens twice in the day and should land with you feeling sleepy at night and feeling awake in the morning. That sleep wake cycle gets massively affected if you do things at the wrong time. So his advice is wait 90 minutes before you have your coffee. It's going to help you out. Uh, yeah. And actually, I think it really does work. So give it a try. I'm See sure what it does it makes. Yeah. What about like a green tea or a lemon water? Is that okay? Well, I think that di- it, if, if it depends if it's got caffeine in it. Coffee right. is coffee or whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter. So just it's just not a caffeine, caffeine stimulant. Yeah, not stimulant. Yeah. Particularly caffeine, because caffeine is a drug which affects your brain in a particular way. It doesn't matter yes. if it's a tea caffeine or a caf- coffee caffeine. So I like think the whole morning <clears throat> when I had a coffee and a pre-workout. Yeah, see, that would make back. me feel a bit sick. But I, I think maybe the point of what we said so far is all about like finding the most natural state of anything you're doing. Waking up naturally, going outside naturally, trying to let your body wake up naturally, as opposed to alarming it with, with an alert and then Downing shoving coffee. it with caffeine yeah. to then heighten all your stimulus. Yeah. Okay. So now we are awake. <laughs> We've been outside. No coffee. We haven't had our coffee. Can and now we are moving on to, well, if you do a workout early in the morning, great. That I don't think there's any logic behind the early morning workout or a bit later in the day. It's more around listening to your own body. People do tend to be more, like I'm sure there is truth in being a morning person, an afternoon person, an evening oh, yeah. person. Yeah. Oh yeah, there is. Like yeah. I am a morning yeah. person. I wake up and I am awake. So for me, I have the most energy and that's when I get my workouts done. But that's a good thing about knowing about your body because then utilize it. If you yeah. know you've got more energy in the morning, use it do well. It. If you know you've got more energy in the evening, be kind to yourself and say, well, you know, maybe adapt somehow. Mm. But I think the thing about a workout, which if it goes back into my territory, is about alerting you, getting your body fully woken up. At the end of a workout, you always come out feeling really woken up. Yes. I think one of those big things, what it does is it, it spikes the central nervous system. Your central nervous system is the thing that sends all the messages from your brain to your body. By the end of a workout, you're fully woken up. You feel it, right? Another thing you can do in the morning is any version to get your central nervous system up and awake. So having uh, a cold shower, you know, mm. even if you like nice showers, which I like nice showers, I turn it down for the last 30 seconds of my shower. Again, does a wonderful thing because it stimulates your skin and your cold reaction. But the other thing is it makes you breathe properly. Yes, Breathing is a massive thing I work with loads of people on. 
Do you know how to breathe? Open no. question. No. Um, what does what does full breathing look like? Do you know? I mean, like er, this. I hate this stuff. Why? Okay. I don't know. I just think I, it's not. It makes my it makes me that like, uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you what it is because it can be really helpful. I'm sure it can. And get some warning signs out there. So, um, breathing properly in the morning, working out does it for you. Yeah, going for a run really will help you get there. But otherwise, you can learn how to breathe properly. We'll do a very quick one now, and we'll come back to it later on. But breathing, bad breathing, is chest breathing. This is what it is when you're breathing rapidly. <laughs> this is the sign of a panic attack. Right. Yeah? Also, your body is sending your brain the message. Again, fight, flight, breathing in your chest. Okay. What you want to do is to breathe in your belly, diaphragmatic breathing, belly breathing, where you get a full breathing in your belly i've got two hands at the moment i've got one on my chest and one on my belly there's two hands at the moment as opposed to uh, <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> like, when i'm feeling really capable <laughs> yeah. okay what you want to make sure one thing you can do is when you're breathing is to put both hands one hand in your chest one in your belly and then to watch what happens when you're breathing when you're breathing well your chest hand should not move the only hand that should rise and fall is your belly breathing <sighs> Right. The other thing to think through is when you're breathing in, your belly goes out. When you're breathing out, your belly goes in. Which is the opposite of what I would Which is the opposite think. of what most people yeah. think. That's really good, effective breathing. That's full breathing that, wake, that will be good for good oxygen saturation. And remember, another key tip here is if your breathing in is shorter than your breathing out, it wakes you up. <laughs> wakes you up. If your breathing out is longer than your breathing in, that calms you down so quick tips for when you want to calm down when you want to spike your adrenaline get you ready and up so learn how to breathe Carl Charles will do it for you working out will do it for you you can learn how to breathe and do sit down and do some breathing before you start your day get your central nervous system activated okay good to know I yeah. mean that all seems like very logical yes but very hard in reality yeah well you've got to practice it you got to practice it. Yeah. But so let's say you're feeling really stressed out. Do it. You can still do it. It doesn't have to be like how you wake up in your day. You could just do good breathing. If you're stressed out, oh my God, do good breathing. Absolutely do good breathing. Focus intentionally on your breathing to reset your system. Do you think people are actually having like are stressed or they are just breathing wrong? Um, lot, well, actually, lots of things can be helped just by sorting out your body right. Um. Breathing massively helps. So I'm saying, if you breathe in correctly, if you do belly, chest breathing all the time, yeah, it's an extreme version of it. Yeah, it literally sends a signal to your brain and your central nervous system that you're in fight or flight. So your body sends messages to your brain as much as your brain sends messages to your body. It tells you you're in fight and flight, so it makes you feel stressed. So sorting it out can be and it be so helpful, especially then also when you find moments where you're feeling stressed okay i actually need to focus on my breathing nothing else that's like so it's why i should have a cigarette <laughs> well that's why people like having cigarettes yeah, yeah. i know when and i quit apart smoking, from the nicotine of it yeah, yeah apart from like the shit that it kills you but when no, no, I, the, the nicotine makes you feel good as well yeah but when i was trying to quit smoking i read that alan carr book oh yeah and he says that like the whole point about like you have a cigarette because you're really stressed if you think about it a different way it's just because when you have a cigarette you take like that you're really breathing. like long drag like deep breath in and then like <sighs> and also breathe actually the most important thing in breathing is breathing out which is again against the grain same thing smoking breathing, breathing out. out so actually okay if i breathe out fully if i breathe out really really fully 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 you automatically breathe in fully so actually, if you want to breathe correctly and have a full breath, not leaving 30% of oxygen in your lungs when you breathe out, focus on getting everything out, you will automatically breathe in. So cigarettes, again, you focus on having a really long... Okay. So take up smoking off. in part of a perfect Just day. don't do smoking. Do the breathing. <laughs> take the cigarette out of your mouth. Drugs? And again... Tell me what you, okay, tell <coughs> what you think about um, mushrooms, psychedels, well, microdosing. Well, they say there's a lot. Well, first, I don't know too much about it, I have to okay. say. I'm not an expert in the world. Um, but there's been loads of it's now a part of evidence based practice to use psychedelics to help with things like depression and anxiety. Yeah. Um, it's not counter. It's part of some of mainstream, particularly in America um, and shown to really help people with particularly with mental health difficulties. Um, but there's other worlds which you're talking about as well, which um, I don't know too much. Of, no, so I'm not going to okay. step into waters. I don't know. Yeah. So don't do drugs, kids. 
But the thing about drugs is, don't if drugs are a coping mechanism. You need healthy coping mechanisms. Okay. That's, that's the true. whole point of a drug. Yeah. Is it's an unhealthy coping mechanism. Yes. Okay. So as much as we can fix ourselves, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So we are awake. Yeah. We've had a shower, a cold shower, yeah, which has <clears throat> then allowed us to do good breathing. Cold shower could also be like how people get up and go cold water swimming or take like um wash your face with a flannel with cold water okay have a cold drink just get yourself get yourself up and going okay yep. so be cold yeah um do a workout if you're up for it or later in the day if that is your body try not to have a coffee and then let's get our day started so what do we have to do we've got to go to work mm. or we've got to do something or we've got to yep. do something on our to-do list or we have a to-do list yeah yep. how do we tackle yep. our to-do list Oh, okay. My bit? The, yeah, the, your okay. bit. Okay, so if you've got a to-do list, the antidote... Uh, my my buck stops. I've done a workout and then my day just falls to shit. Okay, <laughs> like so... I'm we don't have a to-do list. We just keep going. Yeah. I can't write things down. I'm terrible. Everything's in my head. Well, that's it. It does help to write it down. I'm sure it does. But the other thing about the antidote to procrastination is this idea of eat that frog. Yeah, you heard me right. Eat that frog. Eat okay. that frog. Eat, so Mark Twain said... If you're going to eat a live frog, if you have to do it, eat it the very first minute of the day. Get it over and done with. So what he's saying is, if you've got a hard task to do in your day, do it first. Mm. Don't okay, let it build yeah, up. Because yeah, yeah. one, two things will happen. One, you'll, one, you clear that energy. So that's really helpful. Yeah, that's true. Secondly, you get a great hit of dopamine, of doing something hard well. And I tell you what, the rest of your day, everything will be a win. Because you've already had your biggest win of the day. So whether it's that really tricky client meeting, writing a difficult report. Um, having a tough conversation. Having a tough conversation. Don't let yourself ruminate and worry about it all day. Don't procrastinate about it. Just get it done. Eat that frog. The rest of the day will feel easy breezy. So not, ugh, I'll do it in a sec or no. I'll do it later. No, first thing. Okay. First thing. So that's also about scheduling. So like, okay, let's say you have to do that really hard thing. How would you say you should do it? Like, Breathe first, calm yourself down and then do it? Or breathe first and wake yourself up to do it. I don't think you want to calm down for something really difficult. Either okay. calm yourself down for focus or if you need to be in like, if you need to be in fight mode, if you yeah. want to feel really on the ball, mm. okay, do what you need to do to get there. Like do breathing or do 10 star jumps. Tell yourself anything that's going to help you. Um, there's a lovely idea that actually you don't need half an hour of bravery for a difficult thing. You need 20 seconds of bravery. Because actually what you need to do is get over the start line. 20 seconds gets you into the conversation, yeah. into the difficult thing. Momentum takes over. The hardest part is always getting started. So think about it not as a difficult half an hour you've got. Think about it as 20 seconds of bravery. Yeah, that's true. I like that. I like that. And then you don't actually, like, I imagine you catastrophize the situation before it's happened. Well, it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. No. Uh, well, no. It's kind of similar to what we say to all of our clients. Don't worry about the bigger picture just start like yes take one step forward and just stop and do it another another really good sporting thing which um lots of mindset coaching talk about so i'll talk about with people is that treat it like a game day you know like some things are training days some days are game days mm. you're going into a really big meeting or a really difficult conversation or something really important okay right get into the game day so put rocky on rocky on count yourself in is another really helpful thing if you know that zoom meetings are helpful nowadays because you can literally join the conversation at 901 but count yourself in like three two one i've got this boom like get yourself ready again that's your central nervous system i'm gonna get real ready for this and then go game day go be game awesome. day be awesome or fake Be it your own make it. Oh, de definitely fake it till you make it i definitely fake yeah. it till i make it yeah yeah is that okay of course it is everyone does every everyone does anyone that says they are confident all the time is we'll call that a bullshit, bullshit. that's just bullshit They're calling you out yeah i think people in life are better at hi hiding their insecurities than others no one doesn't have insecurities you definitely fake it till you make it and if you want to grow you have to fake it to make it because every time you do something better, you're going to grow even further. So the mm. next thing you come across, that's the, the paradox of job promotions. You get really good at a job and then they go, you're doing so well. Great. We're going to promote you into a new job where you don't know what you're doing again. So then you're in again, yeah, your new yeah, next thing. True. And then you're into the next thing of, I don't know what I'm doing. So again, you have to fake it till you make it. So this idea of imposter syndrome. Men, men are much better at it massive. than women. At what bit? The, um, I think the, well, yeah, I think either faking it or um, just like believing they are, entitled or worthy to something 
mm. more than I mean I actually don't count myself in that I would always fake it like I am the queen of bullshit I think I could sell ice to an Eskimo you're very good you are very <laughs> yeah. good yeah and I think what so what would you say then about how does fake it to make it work for you then what is it what does it do that's good I think you can fake it till you make it. I think what's good for me is seeing how people buy into your fakeness. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So like people if I start believing into, in you yeah, when you believe they about believe it. They believe in yeah. me and yeah. then like, I'll like actually then start believing the fakeness until it becomes real. I don't mean obviously like lying about stuff, but I mean like, the, let's say I go into a meeting and I'm a bit unsure of what the, the context is, but I know that I can say anything with a fair amount of conviction when I see how people respond to that, like, oh yeah, that's great. Or I, yeah, I, 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 they get excited. Then I think, oh, actually I do know what I'm talking about. So even if the thing I'm talking about is fake or not quite right, I do know that I am able to be confident enough to get the buy-in of other people. Mm -hmm. So I think it probably like heightens my ability to bullshit my way out of most situations. I think people like confident, People like people who are passionate about things. That's true. And people like people who they think they can join something exciting. So if you're excited about something, which mm -hmm. sounds like you're saying, I'm excited and also I'm confident or expressing confidence, people are like, okay, great, I'll lead, I'll follow this. That's like a nice thing to follow. Mm -hmm. Excitement, passion, knowledge. And everyone's faking it to some extent. How could you not? How can you claim to be perfect in whatever job you're meant to be? Donald Trump does. Ah, well, okay, well, that's another conversation. Is it? <laughs> Very popping. <laughs> faking it to like you. Practically, 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 pr practically perfect. Pr practically, but practically not fully perfect. perfect. Yeah. 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 Faking like it to you make it on the prerequisite that you are you are saying to yourself, I don't feel ready for this fully, but I'm going to try my best in the meantime. There's also other worries when people fake it, but they uh, other people act and they don't know. They're not aware that they're extending themselves further than they're yeah. capable. Mm. That's okay. very worrying. Unconscious, uh, uh, unconscious incompetence. Very worrying. Very dangerous. AKA being a fucking idiot and not knowing. Yeah, being an idiot and not knowing you're an idiot. It's dangerous. Dangerous. Oh, but don't you think it'd be really nice <coughs> sometimes you can know too much? Like sometimes I look at stupid people, like in general. I'm not saying like people are stupid, but sometimes people are stupid. And I just oh, think... people do stupid things. I just think, God, isn't that <laughs> lovely? Like you're so, so simple that you're just not worrying about stuff because you don't know enough i think that's a lovely place to be so when like children are just not worried about things and children don't know the big picture yeah. and they have just they live in the moment and they're just no fears no worries yeah just, yeah, yeah. Just like, with life yeah, yeah living but, there now yeah like you can just know too much yeah i just would like to know less i think lots of people um struggle in today's society because they have existential worries we are we have so many things that are given to us that make life so let's face it lots of things are very easy we're not really worried about survival for much of our days actually we've given lots of things that help us survive very well as a human species which allows us to worry about things we've never had to worry about before like meaning purpose yeah all those things they do create existential angst and i face that from time to time of course i do and everyone does i think that's a lot of the depression and struggle in life is then, who am I? What do I want to do in life? What's a meaningful existence? When it, those questions are huge questions, and you're right, sometimes it's easy just to focus on the now. Okay. Yeah. Focus on the now. Yeah. Eat a live frog. Do the hard Eat part of your day. Frog. Don't know too much. Don't worry about too much. But work hard. But work hard. Yeah. Okay. Play harder. And then play hard. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay. So do you tell us more about playing hard then? I just think it's all about balance, which we actually discussed last week. Interesting to hear your take on it. I don't think that my work-life balance is a good one. No, I agree. For I me or for you? No, I think your work-life balance is terrible. I think our work-life balance is pretty bad. Yeah. Yes, that's probably true. But so my, yeah. What's the question? I was going to say, what's your work-life balance like? My work-life balance is not good. And I justify it by saying that it's short-term but then I haven't set myself a goal as to when I'll switch that off to be short term. Like I haven't said when short term is finished and I have a like fuck you complex, which is like, I'm going to be successful and I'm going to prove everybody wrong and I'm going to be brilliant because I want to say ha ha fuck you. 
which is probably not the right way because then I'm not really doing it for myself. But why maybe I would say my work life balance is bad because I haven't quite worked out what part of it is making me happy. Mm. So I'm trying to do everything until I work out what bit of it actually makes me feel fulfilled and happy. So while you're doing, so you're saying actually while pushing really hard, you've got to have these moments rather than the end goal because you're not sure when the end goal is going to be there. Yeah. But having some fun throughout. Like yeah, building some, in playtime and fun. But sometimes you need someone around you to be like, literally slap you around the face and say, take a step back. Just take an hour off. Just enjoy what's going on at the moment and separate from work and go out and go and have a drink. Yeah. Or whatever it is. But when you're in it yourself, it's very hard to separate that. Come on, Deves, we're playing frisbee golf. Let's go. <laughs> Something completely Let's go random. Play tennis. Frisbee golf. Oh, so, so what's completely, frisbee golf? Completely random. Uh. Yeah. There is a thing called frisbee golf. Frisbee golf or foot golf? Frisbee golf. Oh, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, but for me, like, the happiest I've had in a long time was when I was trekking last week because I was in a completely new environment. Like, I changed my daily routine. I woke my everything up because, like, life can be mundane and it is a bit monotonous. And even though people tell you, like, go and reach for the stars, like, there is also mundane tasks of life about, like, of getting up and making about a packed lunch yeah. and and going to work and I don't know, I know that dressing. I and like, not every minute of every day can be spectacular. I think it's such a big point, and I think also allowing. So I think it's particularly with children it's okay to be bored as adults it's okay to be a bit boring sometimes as well because yeah you, like the pressure of social media is it curates your life to look like it's a series of incredible events when actually there are amazing moments and then just pretty trivial mundane things because yeah. they're essential to life and you need to do something like to separating pay your, your lights and your darks <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly how many to run a house to keep a house is there's a lot of boring stuff that needs to happen there is i do none of it daryl does it all i am so useless at life <laughs> i can't do life man no but it's true like but also i've got severe adhd so as soon as i have to sit down and do like a task i just can't i just i just give up because i can't like look can't at a focus. bill i can't i can't do any of it but i can focus entirely on something that seems really ginormous to somebody else if it's something i'm interested in or if it's something that is a new environment because I'm excited about it. Yeah, you can hyper focus. Hyper, like yeah. laser in. I could do like nothing else. I'm just like, if I'm a woman, I'm a woman on a mission. Like if I've got to get something or got to get to A to B or if I want something done and I like want something done, I want it done now. Ruthless. Yeah, I'm completely ruthless. But I noticed last week I was in a different environment and I was had no phone. So I had no distractions and I also had no temptations of comparing myself to other people. Um, online why because I realize like I spend so much time like infinitely scrolling on my phone and looking at what other people are doing and thinking oh I should be doing that or I should be doing this and I was in an environment where there was nothing else I could be doing except for being really present in the moment except for getting up putting on hiking boots and walking every day and coming back to my tent eating and then going to bed and I loved that because I just wasn't wanting to be or doing anything else or worrying about was I not doing something else I wonder if that's something about there's this idea of uh, environmental architecture so the idea of actually you could try and do things to change your habits and do nice things in life by willpower I'm going to make these changes in my life another idea is to create an environment that makes all these things easier for you so for instance the idea of um if you want to remember to take your medication each night, you put it next to your bed. Or at home, if you want to be really productive and don't procrastinate, you set up, that is the place I work and nothing else happens there. So that corner of your table, your own office, that is my workspace. And then when you're out of that workspace, you don't think about work. It's your switch off time. It sounds like being out, You there was no environmental cues of being in the mountains of this as a workspace. So it allowed you to not think about that so much and be in the here and now. But you can actually create that at home. You yeah, can think about, yeah. so sleep and my bedroom is going to be for only for sleep. No work, no emails, no work, no laptops happen in there, no TV, no dangerous news, nothing like that. Um, just sleep and sex maybe as well. But just those nice things. Oh, nothing I about. I have with doors like sex free zone and great. <laughs> 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 This is our challenge for the week. Yeah. Sorry, boys. <laughs> no challenge needed. Thanks. Challenge accepted. If you want it, that's why. <laughs> Only if you want it. Um, so set up. Set. You could set up your house or your environment to also give you the cues of this is my place for work. This is my place for play. This is my place for time with the kids. 
and then actually curate an environment that doesn't need willpower because you're already set up yeah. to go and do those things. So like even simple things, let's say like choosing a black plate, for instance, apparently a, a dark plate yeah. is meant to increase um, people's vegetable uh, intake, green vegetables by 30%. Because it Be- looks better on the plate. Because you want more brightness in your food. Interesting. Mm. Um, there was another study they did in a hospital where they said, can we help make people help better food choices? And so they decided at the moment in the canteen upstairs, they had all the soda um, uh, um, fizzy drinks mm. right next to the checkout. And they replaced all of those with water and made the uh, Coke cans and things at the back. You had to make a choice to go get them. When, what they found by moving the water bottles uh, right to the counter and moving the fizzy drinks away, they found that over the next three months, soda sales reduced by 11.4% over the whole hospital. And people started drinking water uh, by 25% more. But that's just out of sight, out of mind, right? That's like advertising 101. So use it to your advantage then. So that's what we're saying. Design your house, your living space, your work design, all these things to just give you the cues that you want. So if you want to go to the gym, like this is what exactly what you do, yeah. where you say, I get everything ready in my bags already there. So when I wake up and I look at it, the bag's there. Mm. The cue is I'm going to go to do my workout. Yes, 100%. You're right. It is all basic marketing. It's the basics of psychology or yeah. like reward and response. Yeah. Response and reward. Yeah. Same as like out of sight, out of mind, right? Like yeah. if you don't see it, 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 it's not there. Whereas like even if you leave a bowl of nuts on the table each time you walk past you probably mindlessly just grab a handful and put them in your mouth and you don't actually think about what you're doing yeah. whereas if you can't see it then it's like it. a conscious decision to go and open the cupboard and go and do something and go and take something exactly so use it to your advantage use yeah. it to your advantage okay okay cool and then if you're just thinking about we've got up we've gone to work we've had our morning coffee now it started to kind of get a bit more into the vibe of the day. Obviously, we're talking about this whole day as like a theory, right? Like we're not saying that everything needs to be like as perfect, but we're trying to architect the most perfect day as you know as possible. You've, you're working you're working in the work corner of your home if you're at home because that's what you've yep. created or you are- In the office, so clearly it's a workspace. Yeah, yep. exactly. So then you can get your head in the game. I could say what I think as a trainer, but I'd be really curious to understand from you if you think there are elements of like the soda thing, food and nutrition that affect people's mind or you as, you know what? Like forget your psychologist brain. Like you as a person, you are a psychologist, but you are also a human. Like some days, some days. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) do you think, or do you tune into yourself? Like if you are having periods where you're not eating properly that really affect like your mood, and like your ability to function and your focus on the day. Yeah, uh, I, I found for a long time, my, my danger is that when work gets busy, I stop thinking about my basic needs because when, you're, when I'm getting really stressed with things, I'm not making a break properly for lunch and I'm not eating when my body needs it because I'm focused on everything else. So I have to, I've been better at this recently in actually putting in lunch breaks and actually saying I'm going to slow down and I'm actually going to eat, I'm actually going to eat something and something nice as well, something thoughtful. Um, thoughtful I, food. Thoughtful food. Caring food. Oh, yeah. Are they caring carrot? Thoughtful about what to eat. Oh yeah, exactly. How yeah. are you, beautiful banana? Exactly. Things that <laughs> things Whipping that are lovely. Three for course me. meal. Are yeah. You? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Jen, but it's so easy just to grab and go, like you said. But you have a okay. So t- you tell me about your things. It's much yeah. more interesting yeah. about what's like you do grab and go. But I'm sure they're good grab and goes. And what do you think about when you're eating and how you're eating throughout the day? I think about what food gives me. Like I think about it as fuel based things. There is a, there are some people on social media who think that's the wrong way of looking at it. Um, what would they say eat intuitively like open the fridge and eat whatever you fancy eating that that day the problem with that is that you are just giving yourself more decisions to make all of the time yeah that would stress me out I need to be organized it's not about I don't think for me it's about the organization I think like intuitive eating is good in terms of volume of food so like if you're not full eat more or if you're hungry at 11 a.m that's okay eat at 11 a.m you don't have to wait a lot of people say i eat my breakfast at eight i eat lunch at one i eat dinner at seven but if you're hungry at 11 don't punish yourself and not eat at 11 i wouldn't say that because then you're not getting the fuel i personally don't eat intuitively in terms of just opening the fridge and eating whatever i fancy but i do eat when i'm hungry 
The thing so, about that I can hear is the assumption of eating intuitively is that you are in tune with your body. Not everyone is. Not everyone knows when they're actually hungry and knows if it's stress eating or exactly. hunger eating. And also, like, there are going to be more overwhelming factors than others. Like, your body will crave sugar more than it's going to crave a carrot. Definitely. So, if Definitely. you're saying you're eating intuitively, but actually you're having a sugar craving because you've had a really high... That's like what we said right at the beginning. You've had a sugary cereal for breakfast. Even if you think it's not a sugary cereal, for example, Special K, hugely sugary. You wow. might think that's brilliantly healthy and it's wow. not. So you've had a special K in your head. You've had a fantastically healthy breakfast. A, I'd be bloody starving if I just ate a bit of special K. B, the only real ingredient you've had, all you've had is carbohydrate and sugar, no protein. So then you are hungry. You are then hungry at 11 a.m. What are you hungry for? Probably sugar. sugar because you are having a crash. So you'll go and reach something that is going to then help spike those sugar levels again, which might be a carby food. It might be fruit. That's okay, but it's still sugar. At that point in the day, you've not had your protein. So I think about it a different way, which is like, what do I need to keep going? What's going to give me the best energy? If I'm hungry at 11, I'll have a higher protein meal, like a can of tuna or like, I don't know, a yogurt, something that then is going to, give me fuel and energy and keep me going until I think, okay, well then I can reward myself again with lunch and that's a nice time to have a break. I might not have time for a full break at 11, so it's about eating something on the go. So I'll always just make sure I have some kind of food on the go. But I do see food as something that should give you purpose and value. If you've got a busy day, make sure that you're eating food that has protein, has carbohydrates, that's going to fuel you. When you get towards the end of your day, my personal opinion is it doesn't matter if you eat at nine o'clock at night or six o'clock at night. You eat when you need to eat. Your day might be too busy. Don't give yourself more stress by thinking, mm. God, I can't eat after nine, but I'm not going to be home till 8.45 and then I'll be too late. That's just unnecessary worry. But just make sure that you are eating for what you need. If you've got an early morning workout, it's great. Eat at nine o'clock. You'll have fuel for the next morning. Brilliant. And eat what's right for you. Don't follow just because it works for one person means it's going to work for yeah. you. Know uh, your body. Know what works for you. Yeah, I listened to a um, um, a okay. What's the professional term? Is it nutrition or dietitian? The professional one. Dietitian. Dietitian. And he was talking about um, with all the evidence out there, there's no room for dogma. He's saying at the moment you can't say this is the one diet yeah, or this is the only diet. He says actually there are healthy things and less healthy things, obviously. Mm. But he's saying you got to know what's right for you, what's right for your body. So, um, well, I think there's loads more to discuss than that. But let's put a pin on that one for now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I think we're running out of time. I think we are running out of time. And I think maybe what's useful is we've talked about the day. Yeah. Maybe next week we should talk about the wind down. how to wind you down and have the perfect night. We've got to midday, haven't we, in our day yeah. so far? We're so I wonder this is part day. one yeah. of part two. Part one. I think this yeah. is part yeah. one. And then next week we do part two and we talk Post about... lunch Exactly. Post we're just, lunch. Yeah. we were on the wind the up. Dip. <laughs> we've got up and now we need to start to like wind ourselves down. Yeah. So let's hold it there. Okay. But use Should some of those continued. practical tips, right? So if we recap on what we said, we've talked about waking up naturally, natural light, getting outside first thing in the day, having some nature. Don't wake yourself up with too many alerts and stimuluses like caffeine and loud noises. Have a cold shower. Think about your breathing. Have some kind of way of waking your body up, but by slowing that breathing down. Eat something that's going to give you power and fuel for your day and then purpose your day and start with the most difficult thing first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let that get challenged done so then you can keep going and know that you've accomplished something because feeling accomplished at the beginning of the day is going to really power you for the rest of your day absolutely and then be mindful of the environment and from there we'll, we'll go on to part two yeah to be continued exactly so stay tuned gotta make sure you listen up for next week yeah make sure you like subscribe comment share talk about us so you can Send find you you can find us on social media at Dr. Matt Slavin and, and Nadeva Gemma Fit. YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Absolutely. And have a fantastic first half of your day. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.